Hi, I'm Jonathan, an Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a design library feature to help increase design automation when working with weldments in SOLIDWORKS. Now, the design library lets us create a series of features in advance so we can later add them to our designs with a simple drag and drop. Today, I'm working on creating a bolted connection between two I-beams. For any library feature, you'll first need to create some stand-in geometry around which you can build the features you want to add to your library. In this case, I have two I-beam sections that are intersecting at a right angle. Now, when you're building a library feature, you have to keep in mind that it may not be used in the same orientation as it is while you're defining it. Adding this extra flexibility into the model may lead to some counterintuitive ways of building that geometry. For example, I'd like to add a reference plane that cuts my part in half here. And instead of adding or using a more conven conventional method, I'm actually going to use this 3D sketch. Now, locating this 3D sketch brings me to my second point, which is that you have to pay attention to the types of uh, sketch relations you add to the definition of your library feature. For example, uh, instead of adding a midpoint relation between this point here and my back edge to locate my 3D sketch, I'm actually going to add a series of on-plane relations. The reason for this is that these relatively larger faces will be much easier to click on when I'm uh, selecting the defining entities when I'm dropping in this library feature into a finished part. Now that my 3D sketch is placed, I can safely use it to uh, create some reference geometry. And then on that reference geometry, I'm going to sketch my profile. Now here, once again, um, I want to avoid dropping in relations like horizontal and vertical, because what is horizontal and vertical now may not be when I drop my finished library feature into a part. You can actually avoid dropping in any sketch relations by holding the control key on your keyboard as you drop in lines. And then I'll use relations like uh, parallel and perpendicular, which are a little bit more robust in this case. I just need dimensions here let's make these guys equal and then I can locate my profile using my 3d sketch once again all right now I can extrude this profile as a thin feature I'll give it a thickness of an eighth of an inch and I'll extrude it about the mid plane for three inches Okay, perfect. Now, next step is to add some holes so that we can bolt this bracket to each of the I-beams. All right, so I'm inside of my hole wizard tool now, and I've started the sketch for the positioning of those holes. Now, you'll notice that I haven't dropped any of these lines in straight up and down so that I avoided getting any of those horizontal or vertical relations added to my sketch. Now I can select these lines, make them collinear, and then I can go and add a perpendicular relation between the top edge of my bracket as well. Same here, I can add a midpoint relation and avoid having any horizontal relations added in. Now again, I just need to go and add a couple more dimensions. Here again, making sure that I add it to geometry that will be brought in with my design feature. So the edge of my bracket, and then I can mirror these entities, the center line, and drop in my points. So here in this entire sketch, I haven't added another any sketch relations to anything else other than geometry that is being brought into my, I brought in with my library feature. Therefore, avoiding having any other referencing entities. I will have to add one, however, for this up to surface condition. I'll need to grab that back surface of the I, the web of the I-beam. Okay, now we've got our holes added in. We can do it on the same for the same on the bottom plate. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little bit here and I've gone through and created all four brackets in the same way that I've just shown you. Uh, and I've also added in all the holes uh, that are required to bolt them to the I-beams. Now all that's left to do is to add these features to the design library.
Now the easiest way to do that is to select the features from the feature tree that you'd like to add, open the design library, and click the Add to Library button. You can choose where these features are added. So I can, here I'm just going to leave it on the top level folder, and then I can add a tooltip description here. So I'll put bolted I-beam joint. And like just like that, it's added to our design library. Time for a test. Let's add it to this welded structure here. So I can zoom in a bit, just drag and drop my feature in, grab one of the configurations, and then following this preview here, I can just select the faces that are sh highlighted in that preview window. So this is where uh, building my design library feature using only the faces in the model is going to save me a lot of grief uh, from having to zoom in and find small edges. I just need one more face, and now we can see I get a nice preview for that feature. And when I say OK, it's been added in. Just like that. So just to recap, in this video, we've seen how to create a design library feature for weldment construction. We've also touched on how to define the sketch relations so that using the library feature is as easy as possible. For more useful SolidWorks videos, make sure to subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems channel. And as always, thanks for watching.